I've just been learning all about the ins and outs of payment processing and thought I'd make this video to consolidate the information in my own head and maybe if you're a business owner or if you'd like to be a business owner at some point and every business owner needs payment processing then you could benefit from the information as well. So um, here's the, the, the thing with being a small business that uses a payment processor which if you don't know what a payment processor is it's just the gateway through which you can accept uh, people's credit cards and debit cards and get paid, right? So a payment, the, the popular payment processors are Stripe and uh, PayPal and Square. Um, there's a few other ones. And basically, if you are a small business, you, you can get in trouble easily with your payment processors because what happens uh, if you take credit cards is that anybody that makes a credit card transaction can, can um, cancel or, or can charge back that transaction. They can dispute it with their bank. Um, and now banks have made disputing charges like super, super easy. You can do it with a click of a button. Uh, and then what they're saying is that, oh, I was charged in improperly. I was not supposed to be charged and I want that money back. Um, and a lot of times people do this fraudulently, they're lying. Um, most people don't realize that this is actually a crime. That, that, that's called chargeback fraud, they can go to jail for that, but most people don't know that and the banks don't really do a very good job of telling them that. So somebody buys your product and then a, a month or two months later they think that, oh, I need money, and then they say, oh, I'm just gonna dispute that charge that I made a month ago or two months ago. Maybe they didn't use it and they feel like, oh, well, you know, I didn't use it so I shouldn't have to pay for it, so I'm gonna hit dispute. They don't realize that they're committing a crime. Um, and so what the payment processor does is it just yanks that money right out of your bank account. Um, it, just, it just takes the money from you without warning, plus an extra fee. So uh, it, as you can imagine, especially if you sell a higher priced product, that is can be pretty distressing. Now, to make matters worse, not only are they taking money from you with with no notice at all or no warning, but they are also um, it also hurts your reputation as a seller. And then you can you can fight the dispute, right? Like if somebody makes a fraudulent dispute and says, "Oh, I didn't get the product," or the product wasn't what was uh, what was promised, but that was that's a lie, which I, I think most of the time it is you can go and provide evidence that in fact they did get the product and they did get was off what was offered and um, if you do a good job of documenting that then you'll get the money back but they'll take a long time to give you your money back it's usually like two months before you get your money back and it hurts your reputation as a business and it doesn't even matter if you win right if you win or you lose the dispute it doesn't matter the more disputes you get uh, the more it hurts your reputation as a business. So you really want to avoid that as much as possible, um, but I mean, it's impossible to avoid entirely. And here's the thing that, that makes it even worse is that it's also a risk to the payment processor. So let's say somebody buys something through t from you through PayPal, and then PayPal, uh, and then they go and dispute the charge, and then PayPal tries to take the money from your account, but you don't have enough money. Well, now PayPal is stuck with the bill. Now they have to pay the money. So you, this is a, represents a significant risk for PayPal or whoever your payment processor is. So uh, they're going to be very wary of this and they're going to try to minimize their risk. And so if you get, um, if, you know, if you get a few of these disputes, then they might put a reserve on your account, which means that they're just gonna hold a certain percentage of the money that comes in. They might cancel your account entirely, which happens fairly often. And the, the craziest part is, even if you don't, if nothing happens to you at all, maybe you don't get any chargebacks at all, if other companies in your industry are getting chargebacks, then the uh, payment processors are going to notice that and say, oh, this industry is high risk and they might put a reserve on your account or they might cancel your account entirely just because of the what they're experiencing in the industry in general. So um, what do you do about this? It's, I, I mean, it's a big problem. And if you've been in business for a while, like most people that have been in business for a while have had an issue with this, it, it, at least at one point. 
Um, so how do you prepare for this or how do you keep this these bad things from happening to you? Well, there's a few things that you can do. Number one, have multiple payment processors. Don't just try, trust Stripe or Square or PayPal or whatever is your payment processor and put everything through them. You wanna have multiple payment processors and you also want to actually use multiple payment processors. You don't wanna just keep one and like have one that you use and have a, another one that you keep in your back pocket just in case because if you uh, sign up for a payment processor, you're not using them for, let's say, a year, and then all of a sudden, sudden you start using them, that's gonna be kind of a red flag to them that something weird is going on, and they might uh, mess with your account. So it's best if you like sell part of your products through one payment processor and sell part of your products through another payment processor. Um, another thing is that it, it depends, like, your risk profile depends on how you get categorized, right? So the the when you sign up for an account, um, it will ask you for like what category your business is in. And the more high risk your category is perceived to be, the more likely you are to be abused essentially uh, by your payment processor. So just kind of think of like, in most businesses I think kind of span multiple categories. Right. If you sell, let's say you sell books and you sell courses and you and you do live events. Well, that could be three different categories of business. So it makes sense to kind of choose the one that is that, that seems like the lowest risk, like the most traditional business. Um, and yeah, have multiple payment processors. Use all of the payment processors at least a little bit. Uh, don't wait until you get your account shut down before you go and get other payment processors because um, it, it's it shows payment processors kind of they have some communication among each, each other and so if you have one payment processor and it shuts you down now you go and try to sign up for another payment processor well they're gonna be able to they're probably gonna know that the other payment processor shut you down and they're going to be less likely to approve you because of that, which is why it's good to have multiple payment processors from the outset. Um, another thing you can do is there's a couple of providers called uh, like Verify, I think is one, and there's another one that what they do is they communicate with the credit card companies and they know if somebody files a chargeback and they'll tell you actually several days before the chargeback actually goes through. So what that means is that if you get a chargeback, you have a couple of days where you can refund that payment um, so that the chargeback doesn't end up going through. And you know whether or not it's worth refunding the payment depends on the circumstance, right? And I mean, you know, if it's like a big payment and the person is obviously committing fraud and you, you know, you really want to dispute it because you want to keep that money, it might be worth it, but then you're going to get that black mark on your history because you got the dispute. Um, so, so uh, verify or yeah, I forget the name of the other one, uh, but those will those are services you can pay for that will tell you in advance if you're going to get a dispute so that you can refund it if it makes sense. And then um, I'm trying to think if there's something else here. Oh, another thing is that uh, your credit card company or the, the payment processors will deny transactions sometimes. So let's say somebody tries to buy your thing with a credit card and then the credit card company for whatever reason decides that this person um, or this transaction is high risk, they might decline the transaction even if the person has the money in the account. If, even if they're actually able to pay, they might decline the transaction just because of the risk. So um, which payment processor you choose to work with can affect how, much, uh, how many payments actually go through versus getting declined because of perceived high risk. And, um, and I, was, I was seeing it's 2% to, and this is from an a interview with, I think his name is Brad Weimart, by the way, um, just give due credit, this is all from him. It's a, a range of like 2% on the low end to 7% on the high end, right? So if you're running like a lot of transactions, you want to be closer to that 2% and not at that 7% because that would be a lot of transactions that are getting declined. Um, and then, 
trying to think. I, th I thought there was one more thing that now I'm blanking on. I think there was one more thing he said that was important. Um, like, important for pretty much everybody. Um, oh, well, well, this isn't it. But another thing he said was that there's there's basically two ways for companies to to try to mitigate their risk, for payment processors to try to mitigate their risk uh, and, and determine like who to approve and who not to approve. Most companies will just approve everybody right from the beginning. So anybody that applies for a payment processor account, they'll approve you right from the beginning. And then at the, the slightest sign of any increased risk, then they will uh, put a hold on your account or put a reserve or something. That's the way that most companies deal with it. His company, which is called Easy Pay Direct, I believe, um, they do it a different way. They do some research. They don't approve you right away. They do some research on you, figure out if they're comfortable with your business model, if, like, what's your history, and see if they think that you're a high risk. Um, and if they approve you, then they're much less likely to abuse that relationship in the future. So, um... I hope that's helpful. It's very interesting for me because it's a little technical detail that I really try to avoid. But, you know, if you're going to get into business, unfortunately, that's just one of those stupid things that you have to deal with because there are, you know, unscrupulous people out there who will uh, take advantage of you in any way they can. And companies, uh, the, the other companies, they, they are trying to reduce their risk and um, not really considering how fair it is to you. That's the world we live in. We can, you know, we can complain about it or we can accept it and learn to deal with it. So I obviously prefer the latter option. So hope you found that helpful and uh, I'll see you in the next one.